Hey, it's Tim. Pick a Truck Plus SUV Talk. I've been getting a lot of emails, messages lately about a no start or long crank on the GMC and GM, excuse me, Duramax engines, the three liter. And it seems like when I dig into this, there's maybe more to this topic once I really dig into what's going on. So in this video, let me go ahead and show you what I found in the research I've been sent. We'll talk about what the issue is. We'll also kind of talk about should you be concerned? Because that's the biggest thing from this is, is this a known issue that should you never should buy a GM product because of this issue? Or is it a, a weird issue? I mean, what's going on with this? So I, I got a bunch of tabs open my screen. Let's go ahead and talk what this is and let's put it on the screen. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this. So I'm on a gm-trucks.com forum, which is one of several links I've been sent. I mean, at least four of these, and plus there's a whole bunch of YouTube videos as well. Like there's at least three right here that are all about that the Duramax. And then there's some more that are a little bit older that talk about um, the other Duramax, the 6.6 going on. But yeah, so there's there's definitely some concerns out there for sure on this engine. And so, you know, if we play like, uh, we'll, play like we'll play this one. Or excuse me, that's got an ad. Let's, uh, oh, this one. I don't want to. I don't want to get copyright over there too. So, so yeah, you can see the long crank there. I mean, that's a long time for that engine to crank, and I mean this forum. Uh, is full of, of links to this stuff like this. Lots of digging, lots of guys analyzing this, a little quarterback uh, mechanic work going on uh, from the background. But that, that's basically what the engine issue is. And what, they're, what GM has looked at currently is a damaged camshaft position sensor exciter wheel. And what, what this is, is it's in the back of the engine. It's in the, in the crankshaft, because the engine's built with the crankshaft in the back. And so they want to scope that and it's a wheel in here that turns. It's figure number one, as you can see my finger around it. What they're thinking here is, is that wheel is damaged. And so you can look at this as an image here and you have a normal wheel and then you have the bent wheel, which is B. And so if that, bent, if that wheel is bent, it's not making contact with the crankshaft and it won't, it won't turn the engine over. Or it, it you know, cause it's got, it's got several different bends to it. So that's what made the long crank. You may have to wait for this wheel to spin just right to catch a hold to get that crank to move. And that's why there's a long crank or a no crank. And you can see it here in the picture. This is, you can see where that is just not shaped right. And so that is one, one of the, the culprits. Uh, there's also been some issues as far as, oh, excuse me, I should show this picture too. So to get to that back of that engine, back of the, you actually remove the cab. So this is the biggest issue going on is that it is a, 40, 50 hour job to remove that cab to get back there to replace that wheel. And then there have been instances where people have had this wheel replaced and they'd still have problems with their trucks. They still will do a no crank start. And it's, it's a really aggravating thing because uh, you could have this truck had 400 miles on it, no crank. You could have, I've seen 12,000 miles on it, no crank. I mean, there's, there's no real rhyme or reason it seems like for going on with this. And there's been several TSBs, and here's another TSB on the screen. And this is uh, PIP 5806B, which is what we currently have today. This is the, the latest um, uh, technical service bulletin on this. And you see it's affecting a lot of models. Like, you know, we see a lot with GMC Sierras or Silverados. But, you know, the Tahoe's got a diesel now. The Yukon's got a diesel now. Escalade has a diesel now. Suburban's got a diesel. So they're, they're impacting all of those. And there's a code, the P0341, if you throw a code. That's the other weird part with this, is sometimes it throws code, sometimes it doesn't throw a code. If you throw that code, it will. it's likely gonna be the, um, the camshaft position sensor, which is the trigger wheel. So people have different words for it, the exciter wheel, trigger wheel, basically just that camshaft to turn, get that crankshaft moving, um, trying to get all those stuff moving. And so if it comes in contact with the timing change at any point, it's necessary to replace the trigger wheel. So you're trying to trying to make sure that that is built correctly and they have the same kind of image we saw before where that image of that bent wheel and so they call it a camshaft trigger wheel in this case and i've seen the ex the other one said the ex damaged position exciter wheel camshaft position exciter wheel so it's it's the same same um part and they show what it's supposed to look like and what it you know what you may look like and then, you know, it's, it's interesting. They talk about labor times, 3.5 hours. 
which is kind of weird because I don't think that's 3.5 hours. <laughs> 3. Point, 3 point, oh, excuse me, 3.1. Yeah, pretty sure that's not 3.1 hours. <laughs> so I don't know how they're trying to get to it. Uh, what makes this also very interesting too is this other piece. It's from uh, GM Hyper Trucks by friend Zane and uh, wrote this article. And he says TSP issued for low start, long crank condition occurring on trucks and SUVs. And what's interesting with this is that this technical service bulletin he's referring to in February uh, of 2021, it covers a lot of gasoline engines as well. The Corvette, Escalade, Escalade uh, CT5. Um, and so there's a lot of gas engines plus heavy duty engines too. And so it's pretty interesting. They have a different fault code for that. And they are replacing, they're doing work to the ECM. They're doing a software refresh. I've seen that. Uh, I've seen guys talk about torquing down the fuse box bolts because they figure it's a bad ground. Interesting. Uh, there's a new one. I haven't been able to find it yet. The new TSP is issued about the actuator. There's also some concerns about a fuel pump. So there's lots of, lots of concerns right now with a 3-liter diesel engine. And one of my big concerns is that uh, looking at going back in time, we have this happening in... February of eight and then April and then I've seen guys who've had to replace this one of the form guys had it replaced on 6-4 truck off the cab replace the sensor wheel put it back together and within about well, 21 so within I don't know 16 17 days had the same problem happen again and so what I think you're seeing now is you're seeing it's an intermittent issue affecting some vehicles and there's a lot of some hearsay going on there's some people that have talked to uh, the service riders at, at fact at GM dealerships and stuff who say there's 18,000 vehicles affected, and it kind of gets people. Oh my gosh! Well, um, first a little bit of hearsay. We don't. I don't have information from GM itself saying how many vehicles are affected. They won't comment on it. But 18,000 is that big of a deal when you look at the full scale of vehicles that's coming out. So that, that's kind of my overall approach on this. Is that it is really a frustrating issue. It's really pissing people off, no doubt about it. And it's really frustrating that it's not consistent. And those are the worst issues. If it was consistently happening, it'd be easy to, to diagnose, but inconsistent issues are very frustrating. The other thing too is if you do happen to be one of those 18,000, for example, you are looking at months. You're looking at months, I've seen wiring harness, uh, I'm looking at my updates, wiring harness, ECU updated, uh, exciter wheel taken, replaced, or that, that wheel changed out, torque in the fuse boxes, actuator, fuel pumps, I mean, you're multiple times a dealership, which really is frustrating. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, 18,000 isn't that big of a number when you look at how many vehicles Chevy and GM build, or GM I should say, build all the time with, with this. So that's a really frustrating piece. And I don't think GM can really know right now today on where it's happening in the process. They're still kind of chasing this, chasing this around because again, intermittent issue affecting some vehicles, not all everybody, it makes it really difficult from an engineering standpoint to identify what that is. Now, there was some conversation on um, the messaging. I did interview the chief designer, engineer for the three liter diesel engine. And I would bring him back on and talk about this problem, but he's probably not aware of it. And that, this is what happens a lot. And this is what causes frustration is that um, that guy who designed the engine, he started working on the engine, like say, if a consumer say it came out in 2019, he was working on it in 2015, 2016. And then when it, re when it was released, he came to a couple of events, then he was, he was already done with it. He's already moved on to the next project. And so what GM has now is they have a group of engineers that are like life cycle engineers, and they look at problems coming from dealerships, and they try to identify what the problems are. And so that chief engineer is gone. And so this new group of engineers looking at the problems. And what's happening is, and I think what's happening in this case, is you're seeing, well, what happens a lot in, in vehicles. You know, the 19 came out, people said, well, that's first year. Don't ever buy first year. Wait for the kinks to work worked out, which is just... It's just bad advice, frankly, because every year, 20, 21, 22, 23, there is a book, like the, they have like a, a three inch or six inch binders, three ring, six inch binders, full of new parts changes every year. Uh, parts maybe go out, of, your suppliers change, you, somebody works a new contract, new supplier for, for less money. Like, you know, if, if I built this pen for a, a penny, and I come in next year later, so I can build the same penny, same uh, pin for half penny. GM's going to switch suppliers, right? Because it's it's profit right there. And so, but this new supplier may not have the same quality standards as a prior supplier. And they do try to look for that stuff, but sometimes things happen. So, you know, things are always changing. That's why it's really interesting with this story, is that you're looking at some 
uh, in the in the comments in the in the uh, forums, it, majority are 2021 models, not 2020 models, which is pretty fascinating to think about that. And there's no 19 models listed as far as on the ones I was looking at. On this bigger one, there is some 19 models from the GM-Trucks.com as far as those vehicles being having problems with them. So it, it, it's a very frustrating problem. I'm not going to downplay that at all. Customers should be really frustrated about it. Should you be concerned buying one as a new customer? Yeah, I think you keep it in the back of your mind. I mean, things happen to all sorts of vehicles, so you want to keep that in the back of your mind and keep and just be informed as a consumer that this is a potential problem, that I don't think GM has a fix for it currently because they're chasing around an intermittent issue, which means you're going to throw parts at it until you try to identify what it is. And hopefully, you know, they'll identify this and hopefully it's just a, it is that wheel and um, it gets fixed or there's a fuel pump issue gets fixed. It's, they really identify what it is. Um, so I just think in the back of mind, keep it in, in, in thought process there, but it's not really a first um, model year issue. It's just kind of what happens, you know, and then you could have a situation where somebody, they had a bad supply batch of these wheels and it went online and nobody caught it. And now you have these 18,000 that were built in three months or not three months in well, actually probably two months of 18,000 of just Duramax diesel engines that have this problem. So it's a really weird issue. I would definitely keep your you know, eye, on the, eye on this as far as if you're going to go buy a new Duramax diesel in the three that you're with, with any other vehicle out there with the GM vehicles. Fantastic engine, but this is probably going to become a known issue and it's probably something to be asked about seven years from now and 10 years from now because that's just kind of how people shop vehicles. They don't do things all the time, not shopping all the time. So this is something that you're going to keep an eye on keep thinking about it. So that's what I got for you today on this. Check out this other video over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.